debris. Right, this is the homemade hydrofoil. It's made out of birch ply, an axe handle, fiberglass, Seekerflex, screws, yacht varnish, and ratchet straps. Will it work? Here we go. <laughs> We're going to find out if it works today. Well, that didn't sound good. I could feel the hydrofoil underneath the board wobbling around like crazy. It was just completely out of control, but it wasn't generating any lift. And this is the moment I realized I had to start again. So the hydrofoil didn't always look like this. This is kind of the, this is the part two, the modifications I made. Originally, I had it strapped to the SUP board. Basically, I wanted the maximum buoyancy and stability just to make it easier to get going. But after testing that, I realized that it's just too heavy. And the way I strapped it, the water was getting in between the base plate, so this part, and the board, because it was only strapped on. So what I've done now is I've, I've, I've strengthened this board. I've drilled four holes and bolted it through with some washers, all stainless steel, to give it the strength. I've, also, yeah, I've reinforced the top and the bottom of the board. And as part of the modification, I've, I've given it a sharper entry. So the way I've built this hydrofoil, it's basically just out of pine wood and nine mil birch ply for the wings. So the wings, the wings on top, I made them quite a large profile. So they're really wide and the tail section is quite far back for extra stability. This, this part here is actually an ax handle. So it's actually really strong. It's probably the strongest part I needed that for strength because basically all the force is going to go through the front wing and this rear one and so they can't have any flex in here. The way it's put together is before I fiberglassed it I've got these dowel rods that go inside so they're drilled out, put those in and they're glued and clamped overnight and then once that's gone off sand them smooth and put three layers of epoxy resin and fiberglass on top so that's on the top and the bottom and it has a curved aeroplane wing profile underneath. So that's how it's uh, generating the lift. And I've also got like a, a really sharp exit. So this edge here is actually quite sharp and thin. So hopefully give minimal drag. Now it's, it's not perfect, but it does work. So I've got some clips of it now and see what you think. I chose to use uh, 9 mil birch ply, however it would have been a lot better if I used something without grain that had been crossed over at 90 degrees, such as in the birch ply, it has two different directions of grain, unfortunately the strength I need is in the horizontal direction and with birch ply, the way it's made, you've got the layers are built up at 90 degrees to each other, so only half of the 
laminate is actually in the direction I need it to be so the wings are quite flexible. I was able to get around this by actually putting three layers of epoxy resin and fiberglass on top but it probably would have been better, would have made a stiffer wing if I just used like a single piece of pine. The axe handle I was using was actually incredibly dense, it was such a nice piece of wood to work with. I was able to carve it out with a chisel and get a near perfect profile of the wing, but I knew that this area of contact had to be absolutely spot on, so in the end I sanded it, and I, you can see me here, I'm just moving it up and down just to try and make sure there's no air gaps, so when I bond it with the mixed up fiberglass and epoxy resin, and I push it together, there's no air voids, so I've got maximum strength. So after a lot of sanding and profiling it was time to actually apply the fiberglass sheets. So I laid down the shapes I had made and cut round on the cloth. This seems to use up the least amount of material and I could make three cuts of each profile for each side and laminate them together. I used epoxy resin, it is slightly stronger than polyester resin, it doesn't smell as much and I mixed it up with a ratio of 50 parts resin to one part catalyst. I was originally going to use the 9mm ply as the mast, but I figured this is just way too flexible, so in the end I decided to plane down a solid bit of pine. This is much stiffer and going on from what I was saying earlier, there is no directional grain in this, it's all in the same axis, so it's a lot stiffer.
Right, so I've just attached the mast to the base of the hydrofoil. It's still pretty rough right now. I've got dowels on the inside with glue and I'm going to put fiberglass around this joint to strengthen it up. I'm also going to drill the base of the wing out here and put more dowels inside to give it more strength and then I'll fiberglass over this joint again to give it even more strength and the final bit will be connecting the mast final bit will be connecting to the, ma the mast to the base plate just here so this junction needs to be equally strong as well so I'll put dowels through it as well glue that and then fiberglass on top to give it that rigid structure that's going to be the next thing it's massive look at it oh it's got a nice low profile on the entry perhaps this is a little bit thick and too short but we'll see we'll give it a go we'll find out if it's going to work So I put the last coat of resin on yesterday about midday, it's now midday the next day but unfortunately it's still a little bit too flexible to take out so I'm just going to give it an extra day to, to set a little bit further and I'll use this time to improve it more.
So after trying to fit this to the SUP board, I realized the platform I made was way too small. So I've made a bigger plate and I'm just bonding it on here. Then I can strap this larger plate onto the back of the board and it's located with the rear fin to stop it sliding back too far. After many different attempts, different techniques, putting my weight further forward, further back, trying at different speeds, I was just unable to get it to lift out of the water with me on it. But then I realised there was something that was causing all this drag. So the water's getting between the board and the base hydrofoil and acting like a big brake. So I'm going to wrap those duct tape around it. So giving it a quick towel off and wrapping lots of duct tape around it, thought this might give us one last try to see if it will work. Even though the water is going underneath the board now, around the hydrofoil, it's still not generating any lift, so I needed to modify it. So after the first attempt that didn't really work out on the water, I thought that I wasn't getting enough lift, so what I've done is I've shortened the wings so they're not not as deep I've just trimmed out a little arch on either side and I've given it more of an aerofoil wing kind of lift so that the first third is climbing then the second two thirds is going down so it's all a bit of trial and error um, and I've also tried to reduce the drag on the front by putting this really sharp edge that will sand get flat put some more fiberglass on and that should hopefully give me enough lift to get out of the water on attempt two here we go. One of the big things you'll notice is different is I've changed it now to be bolted to a small surfboard. This is a 6.2 old surfboard I had and it's much lighter than the SUP. I wanted to also improve the stiffness of the wing so I'm adding a couple of layers to the top and the bottom of the wing. I had the feeling that underneath me the wings were just flexing too much and all the water was just slipping out from underneath them. So by adding a few more extra layers of fiberglass, this is really going to stiffen the wing. The stiffer the wing, the more I can guarantee that even the wing tips are going to be generating lift. I'm still just making it up as I go along, but I think it's actually getting a lot tougher. So some of the changes I've made for Mark II of the hydrofoil, I've increased the depth of the mast and trying to keep it a really shallow profile. I've overlapped the fiberglass so that it's hanging out just in front and I've managed to make a join to give it a sharper entry and exit. I've reinforced this much smaller surfboard and I've drilled four holes in it. I'm gonna be able to accept the plate for the hydrofoil and I also reinforced it on the top. So that should sandwich together. That's the plan. Don't know whether it's gonna work, but we'll give it a go.
Well, at least it works. It's just I haven't got the skill to stay on it. It did get out. I think no, they can. But yeah. Oh, if I'd, I'm sure it could work. But the main thing is it didn't fall apart. So I'm really pleased with that. So I managed to finally get it to lift out of the water. Because I was lying on the board, it was really difficult to actually get the weight further forward. So when it would lift up, I'd have to try and slide further forward. And it was just difficult to do. I probably would have been better off standing on the board, but I'm just so pleased I managed to get it out of the water. Some of the difficulties I had was keeping a consistent boat speed. So early one morning, we decided to go to a bridge that has a strong current underneath it. And I attached a rope underneath and this is the result. So with this bridge, we've got a rope just clipped onto the underside. We managed to sort of triangulate it. It was fixed to the ground. It was going through like a kind of C-shaped bent piece of metal that hooked onto the ironwork of the bridge and that was run down towards me. From that, I was able to kind of get into the center, into the strongest current but it just wasn't quite fast enough to actually lift me out of the water. So unfortunately this was another failed attempt, but it was great fun just messing around in the current. There's a big whirlpool that I get sucked into. I just want to say a massive thanks for watching this video and I can't wait to share my new projects with you so please remember to hit subscribe and ring the bell notification button so you'd never miss out on a new video. Thanks!